Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's that little thing that really gets in the way of your life and can make challenges for you and your life and your body. It's that thing called stress. We all deal with it. Sometimes it can be greater than others. Sometimes you don't know how to manage it. She's going to help you out with that, especially when it comes to stress and women, which is huge, more it's bigger now than it ever was. Dr. Melissa Odin joins us, and she's with the Health Education Resources Network. Melissa, welcome back. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. How about you? Good. I like your festive shirt there. You're getting ready, right? Thank you. I am getting ready. Although today in Texas, it's 77 degrees outside. I believe last week I was freezing my backside off on this interview. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's 77, I'm in short sleeves. So there you go. I don't know what to say about that. But yes, I'm getting ready uh, for Christmas. So <laughs> I hope everybody else is too. That that song, uh, whew, who does it? Um... Anna Kaliki Wiki, right? It's oh, the, yeah. Uh, well, James Taylor did a version of that, I believe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the uh, Hawaiian Christmas. Well, all right. The Texan Christmas. We'll come The Texan up. Christmas. That's right. <laughs> uh, and while we're talking about music, it almost sounds like a countdown of music. But no, we are today going to give you the top five ways women can reduce stress. On with the countdown. Actually, yeah. Before- it may not be as funny as like David Letterman or something like that, but <laughs> we'll try. We're going to try our best, right? But super important. And before we do anything, let's let's talk about why we're doing it. Female or women stress syndrome. It's a it's a real thing. It's big. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, there is actually a diagnosis out there called the female stress syndrome. And um, most many doctors don't really even know about it unless the woman comes and says, hey, check this out. What do you think? Uh, So basically, the female stress syndrome is it can be defined as when a woman just experiences this persistent and recurring, you know, feelings of sadness or overwhelm, physical exhaustion, emotional, mental exhaustion, uh, extreme anxiety, tension, anger, rage, you name it. And if, if a woman is feeling that, they could very potentially have this particular syndrome. And again, I don't really like labels, but at the same time, labels give us a construct and a framework to work with so that it can help us understand what's happening so that we know what to do about it. So the reason this is so important for women is because there is a growing body of research that has been showing over the last decade or so that the, these levels of stress, particularly in women, are more fatal for women than they are in men. And that's because of our physical uh, and, and uh, physiological makeup of our bodies. It's not that men don't experience stress. It's just that we process that differently in our bodies than men do. And so that's why this is a public health issue of concern and why we really need to focus on this a little bit more. Yeah, as I understand it, when it comes to women and stress, it centers manifests more often around the heart area whereby for guys yes like they say stress kills it can be around the heart area but also it can be the stomach or uh, the gut and and different areas but for women predominantly and usually women and the other thing is women don't notice the signs of a heart attack as easily as men do because it just manifests in different ways so that's correct i agree with you on the labels but you know what putting a label on this just accents how important it is that we need to Mm -hmm. talk about it. Yeah. I, and I, again, I, I don't want people to think that they are their diagnosis, right? Uh, That is not the issue. I just want to provide a good framework for women to kind of think through what they're feeling and, and be able to take care of themselves. That's the most important thing. Mm. All right. On with the countdown. Let's start at, can we start at number five and work our way up? Does that sound reasonable? You know what? Sure. (laughs) Let's do that. (laughs) That's usually how it's done. So not that I'm the expert here, but uh, all right. All right. We can do it that way. All right. So number number five five (laughs) is uh, I need you to run, not walk to your ob and set your well-known appointment if you haven't already. But here's the important part. I need you to ask him or her to do a complete hormone panel, including a hormone known as DHEA. Now there is a very long word for DHEA. No one can say it. (laughs) I'm not even sure my own doctor can say it, but DHEA for females. And the reason this is important is because DHEA is called the hormone of coping. So if you find yourself in a situation where you just absolutely cannot cope with anything, there's probably something going on with DHEA and it's probably too low. The good news is, is that there are supplements that you can take that will raise that DHEA level. There are synthetic supplements, but there are also natural supplements that you can take. So whichever route you decide, 
I'm not judging you either way, uh, but just know that there is a way to raise those levels. When the body is under too much stress, cortisol, we've talked about before, cortisol pumps out, right? You're running from the bear, right? You're because you got to get out of there. Yep. Um, and what happens is, is that if that those stress levels don't come back down to normal, your cortisol can't recover and it burns out your adrenals, which is bad. That means that you're not coping at all. And it burns out that DHEA. That DHEA is in your body specifically to help you cope with stress. So if you've burned it out, you don't have it anymore, that's a problem. So you need, and it can be tested by blood or saliva, either way. Um, and the saliva test is actually very, very accurate, but you got to have the right pharmacy to do it. So that is thing number five. That's the first tip that I would say to, to really get this stress thing under control is to go and get that hormone panel done. Go get your well woman done if you haven't already. The reason I'm telling you to do it with your well woman is because typically insurance will pay for those blood tests at the time of your well woman, and Ooh. you may not have to pay anything extra. Ooh. So it's just a good idea to, to do it then. So, so before we go to number four, questions on that. Uh, with that DHEA, is it that you have a certain amount, and then if you use it up because of stress, now it's depleted, and now you have a big problem in dealing with stress? Yeah. And is it... Does it replenish itself over time if your stress levels come down? Cortisol will. DHEA tends to not be so forgiving. That's why you need to supplement it to help get it back up. And then you need to practice that good stress management to not deplete it again so that it doesn't go away. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Important yeah. stuff there. All right. Yeah. Number four, top five right. ways to reduce stress. What do we got? So number four, and it may seem like a no brainer, but sometimes at, look, it's Christmas time. We are not eating well, but we need to pay attention to our food choices. We need to make better food choices. And 70% of our diet every day needs to be some sort of plant-based diet. Now, look, I live in Texas. I am a meat eater. So I'm not saying eliminate meat. I'm saying, in fact, meat is important for iron and protein, right? So I'm not saying eliminate it. I'm just saying, instead of all the sugary stuff that we typically go to when we need to be uh, resurrected at three o'clock in the afternoon, for example, you know, pick something else, uh, you know, pick something green, do a green drink or, you know, something that will really actually give you some real fuel and not just this sugar high. And then you crash, you know, 30 minutes later and you feel like you want to go curl up and take a nap with my cat. So, you know, it's kind of one of those deals, right? Where you just kind of kind of, pay attention, kind of have to pay attention. Um, it's, it's much easier just to grab a bag of cookies or a snack out of the vending machine, but I promise uh, if you if you can just kind of make some plans as to what you're going to eat, peanut butter is a great option, for example. I know it's not green, but on the run, it's a really good substitution for uh, candy, for example. If you got to hit the vending machine, I will just say that if you've got the choice of peanut M&Ms, that is typically um, an okay thing to go to. It's got plenty of carbs and sugar, but at least it's got some, it does have some protein in it. So if you're faced with that, just hit the peanut M&Ms. You'll be okay. <laughs> Just you know, not I, every day. <laughs> not every day, but I, I'll, I'll tell you, that's my go-to. I have it in the cabinet in the other room. When I'm I'm running low, don't have time to, you know, have a pick me up. I'll put a couple of spoons of peanut butter on a low carb wrap. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get tired of that. Like it just, yeah. it tastes like a treat. You're getting fiber from the wrap. It is low carb. There's a little bit of protein in there. Plus to your point, the protein in the peanut butter and it's you know it 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 holds you over for a couple hours if you need yeah, that. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty good. The other thing I would suggest is there are a lot of great protein bars out there. There are also a lot of bad protein bars out there. So please be a label reader. Please know what you're seeing. Please look and see if it's low glycemic. Please look and see you know what your protein is. How much sugar is in it? How many carbs are you getting? Are they slow releasing carbs? I know, I know. We just we want everything right now. But be a label reader because that's really going to to serve you well in the future. Throw a protein bar in your purse or your bag or briefcase, whatever, and you should be good to go. Um, this is not about me, but I'm going to illustrate your point because with the protein bars, I took a job uh, probably like eight years ago. Was running all the time. Didn't have time to eat and have a protein bar. Well, three, four hours later, don't have time, eat another protein bar. Took basic blood tests, get a call from the doctor. You need to come in. I'm like, uh, why? No, you, you need to come in. No, tell me on the phone, what's going on? Turns out that my triglycerides were like in the upper 300s and it was traced back to the protein bars. So when we say protein bars, we think it's healthy, but there's a ton of sugar. Yes, it's typically yes. a balance of protein, <laughs> fat, and carbs but a buttload of sugar in there. So yeah. they're good when you need them. 
you can call it emergency situation or you just need to pick me up, but don't make a habit of it. Just Correct. let me know. <laughs> that's right here. And I'm, my levels are usually good, but the, what that, that, and it was only in about a month and a half, it spiked it up. Just well, see, it doesn't take long. And, and by the way, and I'm not accusing you, but if you're not exercising, then that's going to make things worse because if you're not burning up all of those calories and that sugar that you're putting in, it's got to go somewhere. It's not just going to be eliminated from your body. It has to go somewhere. So just know that. And, you know, again, believe it or not, exercise is not on this list, but I'll just say it right now. You know, a good 30 minutes of exercise, walk, just go walk. You don't even have to lift weights. Just get your, get your tennis shoes on and go walk. It's free. And Hippocrates said that was the best thing for you anyway. He was not wrong. Mm. <laughs> he was not wrong. <laughs> for those of us not in Texas, I have sneakers, so I'll put those on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, top five ways to reduce stress for women. We're up to number three. What do we got? Three, I believe, yes. So pay attention to the supplements that you're taking. And if you're not taking supplements to help you with stress, I highly recommend them. They need to be good quality supplements. You need to know where those supplements are coming from. Uh, off the shelf at Walmart typically is not a good idea just because those types of stores don't know anything other than marketing. They don't know, you know, the herbal medicine. They don't know all of that research behind it, but they do know marketing and they do know how to sell. So if you're getting an $8 bottle of ashwagandha, for example, that's probably your clue that that's not a very solid product. So uh, just be sure that you know your companies that you're getting your stuff from. And so ashwagandha is a really good thing to take. Ashwagandha, <laughs> just in case you're not familiar with that. Uh, it is probably one of the top herbs on my list to help with stress, just because it calms that nervous system down to the point oh. where you can actually function. The other thing that's typically low in a woman that you can combine with ashwagandha is B12. And if you are not... If you think that you may not be um, absorbing your food or your supplements or anything in your gut very well, that's a whole other issue. Um, then you can take a liquid B12 supplement and it's typically not a bad taste. I actually have taken one before that kind of tastes like candy. You have to be careful with that. <laughs> you don't want to go drinking B12 all day long. Um, but B12 and ashwagandha, I would say are the, the two most important like herbs and vitamin supplements uh, that you could wow. probably take for stress. So Lavender essential oil, my go-to for calming. In fact, I never leave the house without my bag and without my uh, lavender and my peppermint essential oils. They go with me everywhere because they can be used for just about anything. Lavender is great for headaches. It's great for stress. Uh, peppermint is great for uh, indigestion, headaches. Why do you think they put peppermints at the register at a restaurant? It's because they know peppermint is good for digestion. So uh, if you have issues with that, then I would definitely, and one drop of pure peppermint oil is worth five peppermints that have sugar in them. So you don't need much. If you have sinus problems, again, peppermint, you just sniff it. It's great. Um, there is a whole section on essential oils in my new course that's coming out later this week uh, called Women in Stress Reclaiming Your Life. And so if you're, if you're curious about essential oils, uh, I can certainly help you navigate those. So Watch your gun down. Say ashwagandha people. yes go get some some really good uh ashwagandha so those all of those things can help just kind of re make the body return to a state of homeostasis basically so an important point that you make melissa is get quality products mm -hmm. it, it makes such i learned this years ago with fish oil and mm -hmm. spoke with somebody who's a um dietitian fitness guy he's like don't even bother going to you know typical pharmacy you get your prescriptions there, yes, but the other stuff, no. It's got to be, it's got to be have the right potency, the good stuff. Um, do yeah. some research. Yeah, you'll find those brands. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and it's not hard. I mean, and if anybody's interested and just doesn't know where to start, and full disclosure, I I can help with that. Just go on my website and you can see uh, the products that I carry. But um, other than that, do your research and determine what's best for you. Because honestly, if you take supplements that aren't quality, you can actually hurt yourself. Oh. Uh, you can actually make things worse than because of the fillers that they use in them. So like, for example, sometimes people put talc, uh, at, yes, talcum powder, talc in their products. I've seen that and always yes. wondered, is that the same kind of talc yes. powder? Yes. You don't want to ingest that. Um, oh. you don't want to ingest that. And that goes back to the hormone issue. So if your hormones are messed up, ladies, um, and you're not noticing that because you're not getting that hormone panel run, 
then if once you get those tests run and you figure out what's going on, then you can start figuring out what's what's happening there. Uh, there are lots of things that you can do to help rebalance those hormones. A lot of it has to do with not microwaving your food. Number one, that's a whole other topic. And number two, what it is that we're eating. The things that we're eating can actually alter our hormone levels, both in men and women, by the way. Uh, but for some reason, we tend to be a little bit more uh, sensitive to those things than, than men do again, <laughs> because of how we're created. But, um, but yeah, you, you just gotta be super, super careful with what you're putting in your body. Cause everything is just very sensitive. Very okay. sensitive. Okay. So I'm getting sensitive here myself when you <laughs> said about the microwave. So, uh, I, we have a, a little bit of time for me, the microwave is the stress reducer. <laughs> It's the button and you're good, but, but you're saying that maybe not the best choice because it can alter your food. I'm thinking. Yeah, it does. It actually alters the, the, the molecules uh, in your food and it kind of turns it into something that it really wasn't intended to be. Hmm. So one thing, but, but I'll say this, the one thing that it does in women and men too, but a lot more in women, it creates what we call xenoestrogens and xenoestrogens are bad. And those are the things that tend to cause breast cancer and other sorts of things that we don't want. So again, I'm not saying eliminate. I mean, I've eliminated my microwave. I don't use mine at all. I don't even know why they put it in my apartment, but just I don't use mine because I did have a breast cancer scare last year and I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. And I never really used it anyway, but I was definitely done after that. Um, but what I am saying is, you know, when you can cook without it, I would recommend that you do that just so that you can start eliminating some of those xenoestrogens. You don't want those to turn rogue on you that it's much harder to reverse those things than it is to, to just not have it happen in the first oh, place. Uh, going to be doing some Google searches on that, but I mean, you know, bachelor, the, the microwave, that's my life right there. Oh, I'm no judgment here. And by the way, xenoestrogens is with an X. So when you go to Google that it's xeno with an X. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did barbecue a steak last night, so I got one one day off of the microwave. So there you go. <laughs> there you uh, go. There Dr. You Melissa go. Odin is here. We're counting them down. These are the top five ways to reduce stress in women. Number two. All right. Number two, drink at least half your body weight in ounces of water every day. And so just for math's sake, if you weigh 100 pounds, you're going to want to drink 50 ounces of water. How I would do that is this between eight, and let's just say you work a regular eight to five, between eight and noon, do those first 25 ounces and then take your lunch break. And then between one and five, do the other 25 ounces to get those 50 in. Now, if you're not doing this right now, you're going to want to build up to that because what you're going to find is that you're going to be spending a lot of time in the bathroom at first. And that's okay because you're starting to wash out some of those toxins. And that's what we want to do. We want that water to wash over your liver and through your gut and start to wash out some of those toxins. Once you get used to drinking that much water every day, then it's not going to be so bad. So just hang in there, <laughs> take, take your phone and do some work in there if you have to, I don't care. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, don't, don't be surprised when that starts to happen initially. Once you get through the first couple of weeks, you're fine. The other thing I would say is that really will kind of supercharge this process is to add the juice of one lemon in that water every day. So what that means is just half that lemon and do half of the, the lemon in that first uh, 25 ounces of water, however you want to do that in squares or whatever, I don't care. And then the second half, the second half of the day, what that lemon does is it helps to supercharge the detoxification process in your liver. Your liver is the main detoxifier in your body besides your skin, which by the way, is the largest organ on your body. And it's, it's one of the main detoxifying systems, but the liver is the main one. So if you're having trouble sleeping, if you're having headaches, if you're having anxiety, anger issues, you may see some of that start to subside or even go away once you start adding that lemon water because lemon is detoxifying. It's very clarifying. So that's why we suggest that you add lemon to your water and just kind of give it that little turbo boost every day. Plus it tastes good. It's like more, it does taste good, like a motivator to drink. And by the way, you know, we talk about the 50 ounces gallon of water a day. You think about it. You just said, Melissa, between, you know, eight and noon, have half of that. If you, well, let's say you weigh a hundred pounds, that's how we figured it out. That's like two cans of soda, but water, it's really not that much when you yeah. think about it, you know? Yeah. 
Exactly. And woo, two cans of soda. You know what? I used to be that Dr. Pepper girl drinker, right? You know, I mean, that's, I lived on that stuff in my twenties and I finally got to the point where I was like, whoa, <laughs> this yeah. is probably a lot. Now I, I am an unsweet tea girl. Uh, if you have the proper, I know a lot of people are like, ew, listen, if you know how to brew tea and if you have the proper kind of tea, it's really quite delicious. And just add the lemon or lime into, I add lime into mine sometimes. Lime is good. It's the citrus, right? Lemon or lime. It's just the citrus that helps kind of supercharge that, uh, that detoxification process. And, you know, uh, there, you can get lots of containers that will give you like, add a boy, add a girl, go, go, go. You're almost there. Right. So you can kind of track what you're doing. Uh, and it, you know, it just feels good. And if you're sleeping better, if you are not having headaches anymore, if you don't feel so bloated, like it can actually help all of these things. Sometimes you just don't know how bad you're feeling until you start feeling better. It's probably, <laughs> yes. And it's probably the one of the best things you can do for yourself. Your skin will look better. Yes. It's now a- that's, that's the other thing that I will say, because the skin is a detoxifying organ, you may, even as an adult may start to see a couple of places here and there on your face or whatever. Keep going. Do not let that stop you because what that means is you're getting out the toxins, wow. get it out better out than in, get it out. And pretty soon that will subside subside as well. And your complexion and lines on your face start, they really do start to go away if you drink what well, you gotta mm-hmm. hydrate. So important. Yeah. And here in Texas, when it's starting when it whenever it will stay cold, you know, I mean, you wash your hands all I hope people please be washing your hands. That's just a side note. But but as you're, you know, as you're washing your hands all the time, they do tend to get really dry because of that. Mm-hmm. If you're hydrated. That tends to happen less often, which means you're putting on hand lotion less often in the winter as well. So, All side right. note. <laughs> that brings us in our top five of ways women can reduce stress on to number one, number one, number one. Number one. Here's the deal. Get help when you need it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with asking for help. And women are so, so bad about this. There is there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? I don't feel good. Something's not right. And I need some help. So whether or not that's from a licensed professional counselor or a licensed clinical social worker, or even a life coach, then, you know, I reach out and get some help. I think one of the dangers in our society is those of us who tend to isolate, um, especially over the last couple of years, you know, we isolation was not an option. I mean, we had to do that. And so, you know, that I think that brought out so many more mental health issues than we even realized were out there. Although we did realize there were some problems before the last couple of years, but now um, it just kind of, you know, put everything on a pedestal and it's just kind of like, wow, we've got some issues here. So um, just know that it's okay to not be okay and that there is help out there for you. Don't be ashamed to reach out for help, whatever that looks like. You, you We live in community. We're, we were meant to live in community yep, and yep. You, you can't do this by yourself. You just can't. And don't get frustrated. It, depending on where you are in the country, there are shortages of yes. this life coaches. It's, it is a, a bit of a challenge, but just keep plugging away, make the phone calls, if it's connected to your insurance, find the right one so you're not wasting your time. Um, you'll find them, but it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time potentially. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And also, you know, there are some other things that you can do in the meantime. There are some really great. Uh, just search YouTube. There there are some really good uh, folks out there who are trying to put some content out to help take some of the stress off of those counselors uh, and life coaches and and other folks. So there's there are some other ways that you can find information. Books are a great way if you're not actually a reader. Um, if you like to listen to audiobooks, then listen to an audiobook. You know, garbage in, garbage out. If if you're putting good stuff into your head, you're gonna get good stuff out of your life. And and it's really a matter of if you've got some bad stuff in there, whether it's your fault or not, you've got control over that. You've got control over whether or not that stuff stays in your head. So what you can at least do to get started is to read some good stuff, put some good stuff in your head. Um, put together a, a playlist uh, for yourself. I have a girl boss playlist that I listen to every morning, except during Christmas season, when my feet hit the floor, as soon as my feet hit the floor in the morning, that playlist is on. And I'm reminding myself, girl, you can do this. You've got this right. Even I have to do that. So just put that stuff in your head. And when the hard times come, your brain has this great way of reminding you what you've already put in your head. Yes. You know, uh, we're out of time, but I got it. I, I'm so there with you. 
if you play songs even from when you grew up, it brings back positive memories. You just feel better. It's just a, it's a comfort thing. It's a yes. comfort thing as well. All right. Yes, absolutely. Great top five. Learn a lot. Jeez. I didn't think, I, I, I honestly, Melissa, I thought five. How much can you put in five? You put a lot into that top five. Uh, I'm glad. I hope that helps somebody. Yeah, I'm sure it did. And uh, you've got other help with this uh, big course that's rolling out in just a couple of days, right? Just just a few days, I think by Friday, and it'll be it'll be ready to go. So uh, DrMelissaOden.com is where you can find out more information about women in stress reclaiming your life. And she did say that in an emergency situation, um, peanut M&Ms are... Peanut <laughs> I heard in emergencies it. only. <laughs> Don't overdo it, but there it is. That's all right. All right, well, so it has been great uh, having you on, and I know we'll, we'll connect somewhere along the way again, I'm sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank right. you Thanks. so much. Yep, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. 